Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's topic comes under medical surgical nursing. It is about eye disorders. The topic is keratitis. Let's begin the topic. Introducing keratitis. First of all, we should know what is cornea because keratitis is infection and inflammation of cornea. So the cornea protects eye from dust, foreign body and harmful particles as it is located at the covering part. It also controls and focuses incoming light, it receives the light, ray of light, and it contains no blood vessels to nurture the eye. The main function of cornea is protection of eye, refraction of the light, and transmission of light. Now defining keratitis, it is a condition of eye where there is infection and inflammation of cornea, characterized by blood vision. Corneal disease are one of the leading cause of blindness in the world. It is not the main cause of blindness, but counted as one of the leading cause of blindness in the world. These infections can be treatable or preventable. Diagram for keratitis is like this. Because of infection and inflammation of cornea, there is redness. And there is also characteristic of blood vision. Moving ahead, etiology for this disease is bacteria, virus, fungi, parasite, and foreign body. Describing about each of them, bacteria like Staphylococci, Streptococci, and Neisseria causes keratitis. Virus like Herpes simplex, Herpes zoster causes keratitis. Fungi like Aspergillus and parasite like Leishmania, Trypanosoma causes keratitis. Keratitis can also be caused by foreign body. Foreign body like dust and chemicals can cause keratitis. Pathophysiology for keratitis looks like this. The infection starts when microbes enter the eye on contact with infected object or person when you are in contact with infected object or infected person infected organisms are transmitted into your body when you just your eye now it will start infection and what, ha what happens is once the microorganisms start to grow and multiply there is inflammation and irritation of corneal layer inflammation can be seen from outside and irritation can be characterized by continuous itchiness in the eye and difficulty in vision. And then there is dilation of blood vessel of eye. Dilation means relaxation, relaxation of blood vessels of eye. And finally, symptoms like swelling of eye, blood vision and redness of eye can be seen. As we saw in the image above, there is mild swelling of eye redness of eye and blood vision. After pathophysiology, there are some clinical features. Very important clinical features are present at the first in uh, first column. I have arranged clinical features according to the priority. So, first are symptoms of bacterial infection, bacterial keratitis. If a person suffers from bacterial keratitis, there is an abscess formed in the cornea which is visible from outside. So, abscess is the product of infection. Next is redness of eye along with stromal ulceration. Stroma is tissue. So, stromal ulceration. Next is photophobia. That is, you feel, patient feels difficulty when exposed to light. Any kind of light, natural light or artificial light. Next is symptom of fungal keratitis. Pain in the eye and complete redness, first symptom. Next is blurred vision, photophobia, and production and discharge of excess tears. Pain in the eye is because of the inflammation. Complete redness is because blood from blood vessels, some amount of blood are leaked. Blurred vision is because the fluid present inside eye comes and get stored in the front part of the eye, anterior part of the eye, lens side of the eye. So, because of that deposition, deposition of extra fluid, blood components in the lens, there is blood vision. 
photophobia is irritation and difficulty when exposure to light production and discharge of excess tears uh, tears are produced by a gland inside the eye so when there is infection and inflammation the gland produces excess tear as a defense mechanism for the eye that's why there is production of production and discharge of excess tear, tear in the eye similarly symptom of viral keratitis is first of all pain and redness of the eye same next is epiphora epiphora is term for production of tear too much excess or abnormal production of tear can be said as epiphora next is blurred vision and again photophobia photophobia seems to be like repeated along with blurred vision but we are uh, dividing the symptom on the basis of causative organism so even if it seem like repeated you must write photophobia because this is one of the chief symptoms you should not miss photophobia in any of the signs clinical symptoms when you are dividing on the basis of positive organism next is parasitic infection symptoms of parasitic inf infection is first of all formation of abscess which is stromal abscess again stroma means tissue so the discharge which is produced from tissue is the abscess formation of abscess which is stromal abscess this abscess is produced by the stroma tissue of the eye next is there is a ring like stromal infiltrates ring like structure is formed by tissue particles tissue infiltrates stromal infiltrates so in the anterior part of the eye there is a ring like structure formed by stromal infiltrates next is sensitivity to light the patient who has suffered from parasitic keratitis is sensitive when exposed to light sensitivity and photophobia might sound like similar but is different thing diagnosis for this disease can be first of all history taking history taking about recent infection infection bacterial viral or any kind of infection parasitic infection history should be obtained and occupational exposure occupational exposure might expose the person to irritants allergens so occupational history is important next is physical examination an eye examination should be performed where you can inspect eyelid inspect the conjunctiva and you can also perform visual field test slit lamp examination slit lamp examination so that you can view each and every organ of the eye microscopically visual field test in order to find out the focusing ability of your patient next culture of corneal cells cells from cornea can be taken out and cultured to find out the nature of microorganism nature of causative microorganism and then treatment can be done accordingly according to type of microorganism next is corneal biopsy same thing corneal tissue can be extracted so that a root cause of infection can be found also difference between culture of corneal cells and corneal biopsy is corneal biopsy helps us to find out the exact stage of clinical infection is the infection acute chronic severe if severe which stage if acute which stage that can be exactly found out when we perform corneal biopsy in keratitis patient otherwise culture and sensitivity test will help us find out the nature of microorganism is it a bacteria virus parasite fungi or which kind of microorganism or allergen you need to write both here in exam or anywhere if you are asked about this in viva also you need to explain about both culture and sensitivity and corneal biopsy next is management first of all medical management and then nursing management so in medical management we have different type of microorganism so treatment should be done on the basis of nature of microorganism for bacterial keratitis iv antibiotic intravenous antibiotic can be given any antibiotic from cephalosporin group can be given iv fluid administration can be done because 
during infection there is too much of fluid loss from our body so iv fluid administration can be done and sub conjunctival medication can be given sub conjunctival med medication means that medication which is applied in the conjunctiva manually and that can help to relieve the inflammation of cornea for fungal keratitis neomycin can be applied topically for corneal infection or systemic antifungal medication can be given systemic means you can give oral you can give iv but for topical application for application manual application neomycin can be applied for viral keratitis the drug of choice is acyclovir but trifluridine bidarabine and idoxyridine is also given for parasitic keratitis again antibiotic therapy is necessary it should be continued for more than 6 months with regular follow up and corneal examination the corneal biopsy test can be performed for parasitic keratitis and its treatment goes for a little longer time than bacterial keratitis next is nursing management nursing management has been divided into problems of the patient symptoms of the patient so one by one i'll explain the problem and i'll explain whatever interventions you can do for that problem first of all for visual impairment the first and most important problem of keratitis patient is visual impairment for visual impairment patient should be oriented to the ward properly patient should be say explained where is the nursing station where is the washroom where is patient's bed how many bed are there around so patient should be oriented because the patient has blurred vision visual impairment next is nurse should have a knowledge about degree of visual impairment of the patient nurse should know that how much the patient can focus to form an image that's why in physical examination there was sleep lamp examination and visual field test because nurse should have knowledge about degree of visual impairment now family member should be involved because there is visual impairment the patient needs family member in care family member should be involved in providing care next complaint of the patient next problem of the patient can be pain and difficulty in the eye this is because of inflammation first of all light in intensity of the room every ward contains artificial light so light intensity of that room can be reduced for visual comfort of the patient light intensity can be reduced because patient has photophobia if you reduce the intensity of the light make it mild then it will be comfortable for the patient next is for blunt trauma cold compress can be given if keratitis is caused due to traumatic reasons if there is some pressure or trauma to the eye cold compress can be given so that inflammation can be reduced cold compress should be given for not for a longer time for 10 to 15 minutes and that's it next is while exposing to bright light glasses should be used uh, we discussed again in the first point uh, we already discussed light intensity if the light is too much intensified it can be uncomfortable for the patient so while exposing to bright light glasses should be used next is for risk of self care deficit because of difficulty in vision vision patient has a self care deficit for that a patient might have self care deficits for that a family member should be involved at the time of care family member should also be encouraged to provide care while administering medicine patient should be explain about how the medicine will be administered and what are the benefits of that medicine for patient how medicine will be administered because for eye infection medicine are not only oral but also topical which should be directly applied to the eyes so patient should be made aware nurse should take consent before applying the medicine any complication should be reported to the physician immediately as complication can result in various adverse sign and symptoms so any complication should be reported to the physician immediately any kind of adverse effect should be reported to the physician immediately 
patient also has a risk of injury as patient is having impairment in vision there is risk of injury in both pre and post operative phase that is before surgery and after surgery if patient has surgical management this is only if patient has surgical management patient should be provided assistance for daily activities like movement ambulation also feeding and many other things in both pre and post operative phase next is patient should be oriented about call bell or any sharp and potentially harmful object should be removed from nearby the patient patient should be oriented where is the call bell call bell is placed nearby the bed of the patient so that patient can contact the nurse whenever he or she is having some problem and potentially harmful object a sharp object means any kind of object that can cause that can easily cause injury to the patient potentially sharp or harmful object should be removed the affected eye should not be given any pressure the eye in which infection has occurred should not be given any pressure because eye is already facing redness if you we apply too much pressure while giving medicine or while giving treatment or patient if patient also applies any kind of pressure to the eye bleeding can aggravate <coughs> bleeding can aggravate sorry bleeding can be aggravated so this is about keratitis next topic will be continued in next video thank you so much for watching